same time we do that, um, science fiction writers and fantasy writers are exhibiting the fact that they have a soul because they are thinking beyond just this moment to what could be uh, and what we could achieve. So uh, I think all of us have the capacity to have a soul, to think beyond ourselves, to exist beyond ourselves, to make a mark beyond ourselves. Whether or not we choose to do that um, is an individual decision. Alors du coup, si vous écriviez un roman de science-fiction parlant de l'immortalité, sachant que la plupart du temps, euh, tout ce que j'ai lu, euh, que ce soit euh, La Cité et les Astres d'Arthur C. Clarke à euh, Le Goût de l'immortalité de Catherine Dufour, par exemple, qui est sur ce festival, euh, chaque fois la vision du mal, il y a aussi une Eternity Incorporated de Granite de Cassagnac, chaque fois l'immortalité c'est mal, Le, chaque fois... Euh, L'humain ne sait pas qu'en faire, en meurt, s'en sert pour détruire à côté. Euh, Est-ce qu'on pourrait, ne pourrait pas envisager une immortalité heureuse ah. Qu'est-ce qu'on pourrait faire de l'immortalité I have my friend Michael Burns, who is, uh, I've known since uh, we were about 11 years old. Um, I asked him once, would you like to live forever? And he says, no, hell no, I get bored already. Um, and I think essentially it's very difficult for us to, uh, as much as it's very difficult for us to imagine our own death and what happens with us, Uh, after we're dead. At the same time, it's, it's equally difficult to imagine what would happen if we could live forever. Do you do the same things that you've been doing for the last 30 or 40 years? Do you do something new? How do you continue to make the apprehension of the universe fresh and interesting and exciting uh, and something that you want to be engaged in with a, uh, on a day in and day out thing? I think that uh, the ennui of immortality um, is a very real and very possible thing. I could be wrong, I'm willing to find out, you know, but uh, quite honestly, um, I don't think that living forever would be a, a great idea for humans. I don't think that we are designed um, to continue to exist for a thousand or two thousand or three thousand years. The, the person who lives that long would have to find something to do with their life that is meaningful and quite a lot of uh, what we do that is meaningful is tied into our own mortality. Um, the idea that we have to do things now to make our mark now, to make an impression, to have an impact now because we won't be here later um, is, is one of the reasons that, that we do so many of the things that we do. Why do we care for our children? Because we want to see them live beyond our own years and be capable and not have to rely on us after we're gone. Um, so I think it's, I think one of the reasons that you have so many uh, stories of immortality gone wrong or a miserable uh, immortal uh, is simply because we as human creatures can't conceive of living so long that that we won't get bored, that we won't uh, eventually, um, you know, the, our brains won't dissolve into entropy. So it could happen. I mean, there could be a very cheerful person who lives forever, but, uh, you know, again, I mean, Michael, my friend Michael Burns is right. I get bored now. There are lots of times where I'm just, what am I doing with myself? And I'm only, you know, and I'm 49. If you want, we'll see. No, we're fine now. This is interesting to me, but, I, but, in, a, but in a larger no, sense. Non, c'est joke. Yeah. joke. Euh, mais en tout cas, euh, sur cette question, je vais vous faire la réponse de Terry Pratchett, qui était qu'il ne fallait pas sous-estimer euh, la capacité de curiosité du singe que nous étions, et que la curiosité pouvait nous soutenir pendant quand même des millénaires. Euh, je vais revenir à, à, à Frankenstein, puisque par, par le biais du mythe, euh, Isaac Asimov disait plus ou moins que la science-fiction était massivement victime d'un certain complexe de Frankenstein. Euh, J'ai personnellement le sentiment que le Ghost Brigade, les Brigades Fantômes, constituent volontairement une réponse à la fois ironique et contradictoire. Parce que euh, Prométhée réussit son coup dans ce roman, il me semble. Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez ah. I mean, he... 
I mean, the, the, the people who are in, in the book and the Ghost Bridge have to create for themselves their own reasons for living, you know, their own reasons for doing what they do. Um, they go through the same uh, crises that uh, all humans do, they just do it a lot faster and in adult bodies. So in that respect, I really do think um, the only difference between them and us is, uh, you know, the, the circumstances of their particular birth and their particular mission in life. But they do, sooner or later, you have to take responsibility for yourself. You have to be your own person. You have to decide what is it that you are doing that makes sense for you to do, uh, even if it means sacrificing your own selfhood um, for a larger community or for somebody else. Uh, and so, uh, certainly in the case of uh, the Ghost Brigades, um, we have a situation where uh, the, the protagonist knows that his time is limited, his time is short, but within that time, he can do certain things that will resonate beyond his own life and will be a benefit of other people. And it's his crisis, as it were, um, is to decide to do those things as opposed to uh, anything else. So, um, yeah, I mean, he is the captain of his own fate. He is the person who makes the decision. Uh, he is, you know, if the, the figurative Prometheus deciding to hand over the fire even though there is the penalty from the gods sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, but, again, that is, the, that is the crisis of every human. Prometheus um, was, a, was a titan or a demigod, but he was fundamentally human because he was saying, look at these cold uh, starving uh, people, uh, I can solve this problem, uh, there will be consequences for me solving this problem for them, but the benefit to them will be, will be immeasurable. And so he made that decision, he made that sacrifice, and the real question is, does Prometheus, uh, you know, as he's having his liver torn apart by the ego, does he ever regret what he's done? And there's nothing in the mythology that suggests that he would do anything other than it is what that, that he did. Which is something that I don't actually see addressed all that often, frankly. En fait, dans la mythologie, tout suggère qu'il ferait exactement la même chose en sachant les millénaires de, de souffrance qu'il qu qu aurait derrière. Et en ignorant que Héraclès, Héraclès, pardon, un, deux, Héraclès le délivrerait à la fin des fins. Euh, cela étant, on va changer de paradigme là. Et pour passer à un autre roman de vous qui m'a particulièrement touché également, euh, c'est Les Enfermés. Euh, vous y décrivez les survivants d'une pandémie à jamais, euh, comment dire, prisonniers de leur corps, empêchés mais capables d'user de robots, les 6 P, pour interagir avec le monde. Alors ces robots ont un différent degré de sensibilité par rapport à l'extérieur, ils permettent euh, aux, euh, aux add-on, on les appelle comme ça, de, euh, par exemple, oublier leur souffrance. Euh, la souffrance de leur propre corps physique qui est enfermé dans une, on va dire, dans un lit médicalisé particulièrement sophistiqué. Et de même que les soldats du cycle du vieil homme et la guerre, ils possèdent des améliorations corporelles. Euh, pardon. De même que les soldats du cycle du vieil homme et la guerre possèdent des améliorations corporelles assez fabuleuses. Entre la réparation des dommages dans les enfermés et l'optimisation, voire la transformation des capacités humaines dans euh, les brigades frontaux. Est-ce que vous voyez ces histoires dans une perspective transhumaniste Oh, certainly they're transhumanist. I mean, the idea uh, is that they are, in the Ghost Brigades, they have these super improved bodies that are far beyond the capability of an average human body. Uh, in Lockin, the bodies are tuned to be similar to human capabilities, but in fact, um, the humans that are piloting these bodies um, are trapped uh, in, from their physical bodies. Uh, and so in many ways, they, and, and the way that they are perceived by others, even though others know that there is a human inside that machine, um, they still see the machine first. So in many ways, what you are seeing uh, is people apprehending uh, both the uh, Special Defense Forces and uh, the Haydens, who are walking around in the Freaks, the android bodies, um, as something fundamentally other uh, than human. And that will 
uh, have uh, repercussions for who they are and, and how they respond. I mean, uh, in, 